Intel i9-13900K, 5.5 gigahertz Raptor Lake CPU benchmarked, crushes the Ryzen 9 5950X, Core i9-12900K in single and multi-threaded tests. Whoo, buddy, I can't wait. It's been benchmarked within Geekbench 5 and obliterates the 12900K and the 5950X. I'm running the 12900K right now and streaming to you guys from it, and I love this CPU, so I can't wait to see what's going to happen here. The Intel Core i9-13900K CPU is still an early sample that features 24 cores and 32 threads in an 8P core and 16E core configuration. Remember, you have performance cores and efficiency cores. The 8P cores will also have, theoretically, uh, some sort of hyper-threading, multi-threading going on with it. So you'll have, basically, eight physical cores and 16 logical processors, and then you'll add, or, sorry, yeah, 16, and then you'll have another 16 efficiency cores, something like that. Or is it eight and... I forgot how those numbers work out. Anyways, let's see. It'll tell us. From previous rumors, we can expect, because it'll be the 32 total, uh, but 24 physical cores, right? So, because of the 16 E cores. So, that's right. I explained it correctly. From previous rumors, we can expect as much as 68 megabytes of the total game cache on this chip. The sample tested here has a base clock of 3 gigahertz and a boost clock of up to 5.5 gigahertz. It was mentioned that the ES3 samples would reach up to 5.5 gigahertz while the final CPU samples will hit speeds of up to 5.8 gigahertz on the single core. Getting so close to that six gigahertz. The Geekbench data log shows that the chip was actually running at a single core speed of up to 5.7 gigahertz. You can see that right here on the post frequencies. The CPU was tested on the Asus ROG Maxima Z not Z690 Extreme motherboard. Oh baby, so it's is it Z690 compatible? I don't have to upgrade my motherboard because I spent a ton of money on this Gigabyte Aorus Master. So that would be amazing. I can just slot in a chip. Oh, sweet. And that was with 32 gigabytes of DDR4 DDR5 6400 memory. This is really fast, uh, really fast configuration of DRAM that's been used in the tests and Raptor Lake is officially going to support the native speeds of up to DDR5 5600. In terms of performance, the 13900K Raptor Lake CPU sample scored 2,133 points in single core and 23,701 point, 701 points in multi-threaded tests. For comparison, in the same benchmark, the 12900K scores 19,800 or 1987 single core and 17,272 points in multi-core, while the 5950X scores 1,686 points in single and 16,508 points in multi-core tests. Here's the benchmark results, as you can see here, and wow, just awesome stuff this does mean of course we do have the new ryzen chips coming out as well so the competition is going to be really heated up i really can't wait this means that the new flagship is up to 48 percent faster than the ryzen 9 5950x and 37 percent faster than the 12900k in multi-threaded tests which is a huge leap the addition of eight extra E cores are definitely helping the chip surpass the performance of its predecessor by a big margin. Coming to the single core performance, since Raptor Cove and Grace Mount cores aren't a, a big agri uh, architectural uplift or lift, I almost said agricultural. Most of the performance improvement comes from the clock speeds in single threaded tasks. The i9-13900K uh, still maintains a decent 7% gain over the 12900K and a 27% gain over the 5950X in single threaded tasks. Once again, these aren't final clock speeds, so the final performance is expected to be even higher than this leak. At 5.8 gigahertz, we can expect a single core improvement of 10% and a multi-core improvement of 40% over the 12900K. That should mean a 50% multi-threaded CPU performance increase over the 5950X. AMD, on the other hand, has said that the Zen 4 increased multi-threaded performance by 35% over Zen 3, uh, so it will be interesting battle for sure, but it definitely to me sounds like 
Intel may be taking the lead here or maintaining the lead at these top end chips. The Intel 13th Gen Raptor Lake desktop CPUs, including the flagship Core i9 13900K, is expected to launch in October on the Z790 platform. The CPUs will be going against AMD's Ryzen 7000 CPU lineup, which also launches in the fall. This fall is going to be an amazing time for PC components in general because we are getting a ton of new components and kind of with the downfall of cryptocurrency mining for lack of a better term it does mean better pricing so i'm excited because that does mean it'll be easier to get your hands on things like the amd cpus that were a little hard to get a hold of for a while and of course the gpus because we're getting new gpus with ada lovelace as well as the rx 7000 series from amd and radeon lots of fun stuff I'm thinking it might even be one of those kind of builds where you end up with Intel on the CPU side and Radeon on, on the GPU side for really, really high frame rate performance. And that's kind of what I'm looking forward to. I don't know. Other than that, as far as for mining, you know, Darrow, some stuff like that where you can use Intel CPUs is going to benefit from the uh, you know more performance cores bigger chips the 13900k but cash heavy stuff it doesn't look like you're getting a huge cash improvement um at least comparatively right so i think if we're talking about cash on this one it's not necessarily l2 cash just total cash you are getting a bump i guess it's about double uh, over the 12900k so things like monero raptorium uh, etc will get you know a, a boost to a certain extent but not anywhere close to what you're going to get on the amd side so you're probably still sticking with amd for cpu mining in the next generation chinese retailers selling amd and nvidia entire graphics card lineup significantly below msrp and prices dropped to 38 percent this is a report from wccf tech as well amd and nvidia graphics card prices have dropped hard and it's not just the used graphics cards that are flooding over from the crypto crash, but also new graphics cards at various online shops that are currently available far below MSRP. As they should be, because on the launch of these, remember, they were launching at a time when crypto mining had caused a huge demand, along with the shortages caused by the lockdowns, which you ended up was just a huge demand for all of these GPUs in low supply. And that compounded into the fact, uh, compounded into the result, there we go, of essentially all of the MSRPs getting artificially inflated. Well, not artificially inflated. I'm thinking about Ethereum. Sorry, 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 sorry. Getting inflated from the supply and demand issues uh, due to those factors. And so seeing them come under MSRP is not surprising. In fact, it would be worrisome if we didn't see adjusted MSRP prices and that hopefully continues on to the next generation of GPUs as well. According to reports coming from China, the latest or the latest inventory of graphics card from Nvidia and AMD has just arrived in stores and the prices are way below their MSRPs as they should be by now. Graphics card prices have been on a decline mainly due to two reasons. First being the GPU market course correction, which saw two years of inflated prices due to supply and logistics issues. And the other being the crypto crash, which has resulted in several used graphics cards to flood the market at super cheap prices. This has resulted in retailers around the globe correcting the prices on graphics cards from Nvidia and AMD, but most buyers and even shopkeepers are using eBay as a reference for where the prices are heading. The graphics cards being sold on eBay are used and not brand new. There's also no way of telling whether the card was used for mining operations or not. This is where this Chinese price listing comes in which shows brand new graphics cards prices at up to 33 percent below msrp the 3090 ti is 38% below msrp the 3090 is 29% below msrp the 3080 ti is 33% below msrp the 3080 no 12 gigabyte says no change because they don't know right now the 3080 is 16% below msrp the 3070 ti is 15% below the 3070 is 13% below. The 3060 Ti is really maintaining its price pretty well at only 4% below. 
the 3060 is 12% below, the 3050 is 10% below. And on the Radeon side, your biggest uh, decrease is on the 6900 XT at 37.5% below MSRP. The 6800 XT at 15% below MSRP and the 6800 below 13% uh, below MSRP and the 6750 19% and that is also correlated to the 6650 XT which we could say is a result of their poor performance on mining uh, and below way below expectations at this point I would recommend keeping this chart up and basically paying attention to it because these prices should translate into US dollar prices, US marketplace prices eventually. So if you're going out and purchasing US G, you know, GPUs on the US market or even other markets, uh, Canada, uh, Europe, whatever it may be, make sure you're aware that the price adjustment's gonna happen first here, kind of in this Chinese market and then kind of move itself over to the Western countries. And so you don't want to be overpaying right now for something that is potentially going to hit these prices. So keep this pinned when you're doing used searches, especially you shouldn't be paying anything over this uh, as far as for used prices and new prices too, uh, theoretically, not financial advice, of course. The list includes previous and new graphics cards prices from today, the 11th of July, and also compares them to MSRP. So coming to the juicy bits, all new graphics cards from Nvidia and AMD are now being sold way below MSRP. The only cards that are in single digit range below MSRP are the 6950 XT at 6.4% and the 3060 Ti, which is extremely popular right now at 4.1%. One is, fair, uh, one is a fairly new graphics card positioned at the top end, and the other is one of the most popular GPUs in the mainstream segment. Despite that, these graphics cards are, can now be bought for prices that are lower than MSRPs in new condition. The graphics card with the most aggressive price cuts are also the fastest by each respective company. The 3090 Ti being sold at 38% below MSRP, and the 6900 XT is being sold for 37% 0.5% below MSRP. The 3080 Ti and 3090 have also seen a fairly big price drop of 29% and 33% respectively. One thing that I should be pointing out is that the official MSRP for these graphics cards is slightly higher in China due to added VAT. So now these graphics cards are not only below their MSRPs, but also below the international MSRP minus the VAT. Based on where the pricing is going in a few months, we might be able to get an RTX 3090 at or under a thousand US dollars and the same with the AMD GPU lineup. And you would hope so before the launch of the new GPUs, by the way, too. Both AMD and Nvidia are cleaning up their GPU inventory to make room for next gen graphics cards, which are expected to launch this fall. So expect more aggressive price cuts and deals in the coming month. Thanks for checking out this clip from the Crypto Mining Show. You can check out the full episode here or more crypto content down here. Also, I'd like you to check out my locals page at sonofatech.locals.com where you can become a member for free or choose to be a $5 a month supporter that unlocks additional content.